Good morning. It's been a minute since I've recorded a video. Wanted to share what we have going on. I'm in Washington. It's been wet and rainy. So much has changed since being fall and getting more rain. You can see Otto. He's gotten a lot taller. He's starting to get his uh, jersey coloring on his face. He's currently still with the goats. We haven't moved him to the next pen over simply because I haven't been able to find a bull calf cheap enough to justify getting another one. And he seems to be doing pretty good. Bro, don't even try. Cool guy has gotten such an attitude. No. Cool guy, go back. Slowly back away from the rooster. I have no interest in fighting you. Uh, squeeze out of here. Since Otto has been here with us, we've been really strict on using a bottle holder in comparison to what we did with the first three, which was hold the bottles for them. And I do not get headbutted by him. The other three, when I walked past them, that was something that they expected from me was like, I am their mom. They associated me directly with the bottle. So something I have noticed with him is I have never been headbutted by him. Occasionally I do pet him here and there. I do want to have a decent relationship with him and I do want to know what to expect. However, unlike my other bottle calves, I have not. I don't come in here and cuddle with him. The first three bottle calves were also very exciting. Um, they were my first cows. So I was all over them and it really shows in their personality like Cassie, Delilah, and Snowdrop really love me. <laughs> and if I am not in there petting them, they will go to their cow lookout and they will be screaming at me the entire time. Whereas Nala and Rouge, you know, they, they might want some pets from me here and there, but they're pretty, they're okay existing without me. So something I want to think about having a bull is I do want to have a respectful relationship with him and be realistic to what he is, what he's capable of, and treating him with the most respect that I can while he's in our care. My heifers right now are up to a bale and a half of hay a day, and those are 55 pound round bales. Well, something that's different is that every day I have to put two bales of hay in the hay feeder. I guess, you know what, every other day I have to put two in here. The second day I need to fluff it back up a little bit and pile it towards where uh, Nala's head is. But today I need to put two bales in there. This has changed because they are no longer on pasture. They are officially confined to the barn for the winter time. And I remember thinking about having to house our heifers, you know, three months out of the year. And initially I was pretty disappointed about that. We have a few puddled areas. When I see it in person, I definitely wouldn't want the heifers to be in just a watery pasture like it wouldn't be good for my grass. Also, I don't think it'd be good for the ladies. I think in the future, using regenerative agriculture practices, this is something that I hope to improve, so that way during the winter time, we are still retaining water rather than having sitting water on top. This is definitely a long-term goal and not something I'm gonna see out of uh, raising late spring uh, and throughout summertime. As my heifers have been growing, I've noticed that they'll go through these phases that they chunk up, get taller and skinnier. And I feel like that experience is very similar to what it's like raising a human child. I did have a concern that I was over conditioning my heifers. So I wanted to share the information I received via the internet. So when you have a dairy cow or a dairy heifer, you may look up body scoring, which is basically a way to identify your cow's condition. That applies a lot more to lactating dairy cows, not heifers. Heifers, if they're a little chunky, that's okay because they are still in the process of growing. And even when they're finally at a mature age to be impregnated, 
they still are growing and are not at their full body weight. So you want to continue to feed them generously because they need that energy to grow their bodies while also growing a baby. Soon after, I posted on a forum about inquiring about body condition in heifers, I noticed that the ladies dropped weight again, got taller. So the ladies just got their hay ration for today. I did drop some on Nala's head. <laughs> Luckily, not the whole bale. But you can see that they're starting to look like adult cows. The jerseys grow and mature a lot quicker. I really compare it to the difference between having a small dog and a large dog. A large dog may take a couple years to grow where they grow pretty quick, but they stop growing, um, you know, with a small dog or a small cow. Happy girls. While we are housing our heifers in the barn for the winter, I realize a struggle that I am running into is I need a place to put the manure. In the summertime, it worked really well for us to put it into the chicken paddock wherever they were in the rotation, and they would scratch it into the ground, it would get decomposed. However, now that the chickens are stationary and they're chicken coop, that's not so much of an option anymore because it all accumulates in one spot and there isn't enough time for it to be decomposed. So, though I'm not a fan of having a large compost pile, I realize this is something that is going to be a necessity, at least in this season. They're all healthy and thriving. We do just have them out here on the gravel. Uh, so they still have outside access. Husband does move this netting in a circle around the chicken coop. He does so, I think, every three days. And as of right now, this is kind of where we're at. Well, that concludes my first winter farm update. Let me know if you have any questions below. Thank you.